My name is Daniel Hastings, the current department head of MIT Aero Astro. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the commencement celebration for the Aero Astro graduating class of 2021. Although this may be a virtual commencement, I assure you that our well wishes are genuine. In fact, the class of 2021 is deserving of special recognition. Having spent the last 14 months of your lives and your MIT experience living in a world unlike any you could have imagined or contemplated before this. I want to congratulate and thank each member of the class of 2021 for your courage, commitment, good grace, and despite the circumstances, good humor during this last year. When future graduating classes and generations of faculty and staff look back at academic year 2021, they'll be truly astounded by what our students accomplished in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. Never doubt that it is you, our students, the true heart and soul of Aero Astro, who make us the premier department in the country. In this year, the year of COVID, we must pay special tribute to you, our students, for I believe this has been the biggest challenge and heaviest load, one that, that you have borne better than most of us could in, in these same circumstances. Beyond the pandemic, this has been a tumultuous year in which to be alive and an unimaginable year in which to come of age. During a year in which racism, Black Lives Matter movement, an election and a subsequent turmoil have competed with the pandemic for national headlines, you, our students, have been thrust into a world turned upside down. To your everlasting credit, you've refused to give up. You have shown us how to put one foot in front of the other. Whether you've been alone on campus, alone at home, or just lonely, perhaps in a difficult situation with a roommate or a family member, you have faced challenges beyond the academic health concerns, family worries, psychological stress. What you've lived this last year, we can only marvel. So to the graduating class of 2021, I say congratulations and thank you. And now on with the commencement ceremony. Congratulations, class of 2021. My name is Emily Calandrelli. On the internet, you may know me as the Space Gal, and I graduated from MIT in 2013 with masters from Core 16 and TPP. And when I was where you are, I remember the simultaneous emotions of feeling elated that I had made it that far, and also excitedly nervous about what now to do with that shiny education. I came to MIT thinking I knew the one thing I wanted to do with my life, and left knowing that there were now many things I wanted to do with my life. MIT has a way of opening up the world, doesn't it? Today, I'm an executive producer, TV show host, author, clothing designer, business owner, and now TikToker. But the path to get there was filled with fear and failure, and I am convinced that these are the two things that are the secret to success. You have lived through MIT, so you are no stranger to things that are scary. The trick is to keep up that energy and chase things that scare you throughout your career because the best accomplishments in life start with you being a little scared. Scared that you might mess up or scared that you are not brave enough or smart enough or experienced enough, but know that if you are having these thoughts, you're on the right path and that next time around, it's going to take something even more ambitious to scare you. And failure. Before I landed a show with Bill Nye, I got rejected from many other shows. Before Emily's Wonder Lab got picked up by Netflix, it got rejected by other networks. Successful people are just really good at forgetting about their failures. Not everyone will have the same dream as you. That doesn't mean it's not worth dreaming. It just means you might need to find a different path to get there. So class of 2021, my wish for you is that you constantly find things that scare you. That doesn't sound very nice, but I promise you it's a good thing. And that you have a short memory when it comes to failure. Congratulations, class of 2021. I'm excited to see the many things that you end up doing in the world. I'm uh, astronaut Charlie Duke, a graduate of uh, MIT, uh, course 16, in June of uh, 1964. Congratulations to each of you on a uh, job well done and receiving your degrees. Uh, I know it's been uh, a, a difficult challenge for many of you, as it was for me. Probably the hardest two years of my career was uh, uh, struggling through MIT uh, to uh, get my uh, degree. But thankfully, the hard work and the perseverance uh, that you've all accomplished and that I accomplished has well, paid off for div great 
big dividends for me, and I hope it will for you also. From MIT, I went to test pilot school, test pilot school on to NASA, uh, NASA to the moon, uh, and uh, now I reflect back and uh, I look at the uh, joy that I experienced uh, along my career with hard work, perseverance, uh, the moon was not the limit for me. So congratulations to each of you. I wish you well in your future careers. And uh, hopefully uh, it will be uh, for you uh, and others to uh, go on to uh, Mars, back to the moon maybe, on to Mars. So uh, God bless you all and uh, have a great career. It gives me great pleasure today to speak on behalf of my PhD advisee, Dr. Sandeep Badrinath. At MIT, Sandeep worked on several impactful research projects and in fact won several best paper awards in the top air, air transportation conferences. In his doctoral thesis, Sandeep developed techniques based on queuing theory and controls to address the challenge of how we can better manage congested networks like a busy airport. Sandeep is truly a master in bringing state of the art and research into practice, considering what the key challenges that need to be addressed in order to actually put something into use. In fact, the models he developed as part of his PhD thesis are now going to be put into use by the FAA in how they estimate what is going on at a busy airport when they do their environmental impact assessments. On a different note, Sandeep has also been a wonderful collaborator to so many uh, people in our group and also a thoughtful mentor to many undergraduates. He truly thinks about the vision of what needs to be done in a research project and helps other people understand that vision and also guides junior researchers through that process. We are all going to miss him, but since he will be living in the Boston area and continuing research in transportation, I'm looking forward to meeting up again soon in person to celebrate his many, many accomplishments. And I'm sure we're going to hear great things from him in his career. Congratulations, Dr. Badrinath. Hello, it's my real privilege to advise Guillaume for his uh, PhD in aeronautics and astronautics. Before he came to AeroAstro, I was also actually his advisor in the Technology and Policy or TPP program at MIT. Uh, Guillaume came to us from Ecole Centrale Paris and um, brought with him a remarkable, remarkable range of skills, deeply mathematical, a coder extraordinaire, but also developed into a really uh, talented policy assessor um, and able to integrate all of these skills from mathematical uh, analysis, coding, policy analysis into some really uh, insightful and wonderful analysis. One of the most recent uh, analysis he's worked on um, was of the um, air pollution impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic and he's produced what I think is one of the most comprehensive evaluations of the atmospheric impacts globally of the, the COVID-19 pandemic, including how it impacted human health. Now, beyond his academic skills in, as demonstrated in his PhD, he also is a speaker of French, English, Portuguese, German, Chinese, and Spanish, which is, is really quite remarkable. During his time um, at MIT, he also uh, spent about uh, six months um, working at the UN Industrial Development Organization in China, which was a, another wonderful opportunity for him to um, amplify his impacts in a, a real-world um, policy setting. So in summary, he's a remarkably capable individual who was a wonderful colleague at MIT, and I, Guillaume, I wish you all the best for the future. This is Carrie Cahoy. I am here to congratulate Dr. James Clark, or Jim Clark, on his PhD from the Aero Astro Department. Um, Jim has been at MIT since an undergraduate, um, and we first worked with him um, 
during mission design classes um, back um, when he was still an undergrad. And we're absolutely delighted to have him join our lab for graduate school and stay at MIT um, and um, really have been very impressed overall with his creativity, his good nature, um, his humor, his insight, and um, his deep knowledge and understanding of um, physics and aero astro um, systems and concepts overall. So um, Jim's research work has centered on small satellites over the recent years, um, although his imagination is much, much broader horizons than that. Um, and his PhD work is about a capability that will allow us to see things that are very hard to see <laughs> right now, both with ground-based telescopes and um, with space telescopes. So looking at very dim objects. Some examples include um, exoplanets next to host stars. Um, and so those can be very challenging to see um, because they're illuminated by their host star, but you have to block that. Um, and they're a very dim signal compared to it in the noise that was next to it. Um, so a lot of people have focused on using special instruments on ground telescopes and with space telescopes to be able to see dim astrophysical objects like exoplanets. And um, Jim's thesis work worked not just on developing instruments for the telescopes themselves, but um, combining um, tools. So using formation flight with a, a, a reference beam that you could use to help you um, calibrate and align and do wavefront control. So control the light that's coming into your telescope that you're observing with by having this reference um, in your field of view in addition to your target. So you have your both target and your reference. And the reference that Jim um, developed was actually based on using a satellite. So formation flying both with ground telescopes and with space telescopes um, to provide this kind of reference beacon that you could use to improve your ability to image dim objects. So the concept that this is named is called Laser Guide Star. And um, Jim's concept got a lot of very um, um, interested press articles about it, um, for one thing, and some of his other um, laser-based concepts as well. Over the years, um, he's been um, very productive in terms of um, ideas and publications. So um, we're very excited. Jim um, was um, working as well with Professor Sarah Seeger as a research scientist, postdoc and research scientist after graduation, um, which was one of our first pandemic defenses. Um, and we're really delighted to hear about um, his opportunities with Aerospace Corporation in the DC area moving forward. Jim is a real um, perseverant, strong, hardworking, caring individual um, who really um, was very, very well loved as a TA. He spent a lot of time working with students on concepts and coming up with new fun ways to incorporate um, fun with learning like Kerbal Space Program. And he also was a great um, volunteer outreach educator for high school students with the Lincoln Beaverworks Summer Institute. So um, we're very excited to stay in touch with Jim and keep collaborating with him moving forward and wish him well um, getting through the next um, steps of his career and his life. And um, just great big congratulations. We are very, very honored to have gotten to work with you, Jim. Um, you're a bright, shining light. And um, we really look forward to seeing what kinds of concepts that are novel and innovative that you um, enable in the future. So congratulations again. Um, we are just delighted to have had you with us for the time that you were and look forward to seeing where you go in the future. So best of luck and stay in touch. Dear Ella Heg, I wanted to send you my warmest congratulations. I met you about four years ago when you approached me first to work with you and be your advisor. And I must say that I'm so proud of being your advisor and witnessing 
how you have grown and become a talented and successful researcher. You have gone really a long way. Um, apart from your talent and smartness, one key quality you have that I admire and believe in is your perseverance. I know this is a winning quality that will make you very successful in your career. So thank you for taking this journey with me. I can't wait for the great things you will do next. And if I'm to give you a little bit of advice, keep doing what you love. Always approach life in a positive way. Adapt to the world. And very importantly, keep persevering and believing in yourself. I'm very proud of you already. And I know that I am going to be even more proud in the years to come. Congratulations. This is Carrie Kohoi, and I just want to congratulate um, new Dr. Riley Fitzgerald from our lab, the Space Telecommunications Astronomy and Radiation Lab in the Aero Astro Department. Um, Riley joined us um, in 2016 from Princeton um, and was um, quickly after um, became a Draper Fellow, which is a great um, honor and um, benefit to have the ability to work with the Draper Lab and expert mentors there, um, like Phil Haddis, who's on Riley's committee and many others. Um, Riley's time here at MIT has been um, on so many different topics that he's contributed to and been impactful with in our lab, um, as well as his dissertation research topic, which was um, making it a easier process to figure out how to get small spacecraft um, into orbit around the moon in an, an approach that can really be generalized to other um, bodies as well as the moon. Um, but trying to minimize the cost and time you spend tracking the spacecraft and understanding how to use as little fuel as possible um, while still doing a good job of meeting your mission objectives, um, getting to the orbit that you want to be in at the time um, and with the precision that you wanted when you set out. Um, and so Riley developed a very complete um, set of tools to enable an assessment of many, many different um, types of orbits and missions that could be um, realized and, and to make it possible to kind of prioritize and rank them and do a good job of choosing what's the right fit for your mission. Um, so it's a very nice piece of work. Um, while at MIT, Riley was a terrific mentor in our lab um, to both undergraduates and graduates. He was a really beloved TA um, of Dynamics. Um, and also, we're really excited for um, his new future um, um, career um, where he'll be taking a um, faculty job at Virginia Tech, so, um, which is a really um, terrific um, next step um, for, for Riley. And we're really excited to see where um, his lab and his students um, go in the future. Um, so congratulations again, Riley. Um, we will miss you here. Um, your positive energy, your enthusiasm, your creativity, your um, amazing capability to do very beautiful graphics and math, um, as well as your prize-winning mission acronyms. Um, <laughs> so um, best wishes in the future and please um, keep in touch. We're looking forward to hearing um, about your next successes. Hi, I'm NASA astronaut Rajachari and want to congratulate the MIT graduating class of 2021. I especially want to throw a shout out to those graduating from MIT's Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics who have a special place in my heart. As an alum of Core 16, I know all too well what you've been through scholastically. If you're an undergrad, it's been the humbling and maybe humiliating experience of getting some of those first exams handed back to you. If you're a grad student, sure, you had classes, but mostly and always, it was about the research. Whether good results, bad results, or no results, how many times did you feel like just throwing in the towel and starting over? And deadlines, always deadlines. Let's face it, you were earning a degree from the best aerospace program 
grad or undergrad, in the country at the number one engineering school in the country. You never thought it would be easy. But then came COVID, and what should have been insanely difficult but doable, doable because you are surrounded by friends, classmates, lab mates, and professors, became heavier and harder than anyone could have ever imagined in their worst nightmare. Some of you left Cambridge in March 2020 and haven't returned. Others of you, while living here on campus, aren't really living. You've been relegated to a room where you watch your classes on your laptop, eat your meals, and live what is a normal existence for an abnormal time. Sure, your professor might be in an adjacent building and your classmate might be down the hall, but you study alone. Of course, you Zoom, you Slack, you FaceTime, but everything has changed. And as for grad students, research, what research? You could live with a few weeks hiatus or maybe a couple of months, but not this. Virtual lab meetings, I don't know how you guys function, but you do, you did, you are, all of you. Not only did you function, you thrived. You might not know it, but what you did was nothing short of amazing, miraculous, in fact. Today you find yourself graduating from MIT's Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics, having spent the last 14 plus months in the midst of a world run amok. You may never realize or appreciate what you've accomplished. The class of 2020 knows something of what you experienced, but only you, the class of 2021, knows in full what you've done. I congratulate you and I thank you. Now get out there and go change the world. I'm Larry James, a deputy director here at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, and I just wanted to offer my congratulations on making it through your time at MIT. Uh, that is a great accomplishment, something you should be very proud of as you walk out the door. Uh, it is a great time, a great time of celebration. So as you walk out that door, you're going to have great opportunities. Uh, frankly, leaving MIT, coming into a new position, a new job, uh, with that behind you, with that MIT degree, will open up a lot of doors for you. And so I hope you take advantage of that. Uh, it really does call upon you to do incredible things for our industry, for the aerospace industry, but also for our nation and for the world. Because as you go through your career, you'll have opportunities to work on incredible technologies, incredible missions and programs, and you need to take advantage of that. Take risks, do exciting things, do fun things. Uh, here at JPL, as you know, uh, we get to do a lot of crazy things, whether it's landing on Mars, flying helicopters, uh, doing incredible Earth science for our world, whatever the case may be, those are the types of things you can be a part of. So as you walk out that door, I would encourage you to just grab hold of those opportunities. Don't be afraid to take risks. Delve into those hard things that no one knows how to do, but we are background in your training you will solve those problems. And as we say here at JPL, our motto, our credo, dare mighty things. So I wish you all the best as you depart on your next phase of your journey in life. And always know that uh, your training and your education at MIT will really stand you well as you take on those challenges for our nation. Greetings, uh, graduates, and uh, congratulations to Aero Astro Class of 2021, Mike Fink, Class of 89. We are in a fantastic time to be an uh, Aero Astro graduate. There's so much cool things, so many cool things happening in the aerospace business, and there's uh, room for you, whether you come uh, join us at NASA or work for any of these other awesome aerospace companies, you are the right place at the right time. So we wish you luck and, uh, and, and the best of, of your future and uh, keep up the good work. Hi, my name is Jonathan Howe. I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate Chris Frey on an excellent job doing his PhD thesis. This has been a collaboration with Ted Steiner at Draper, who has been his co-advisor on this work. So it all started a couple of years ago when we worked on a project called Fast Lightweight Autonomy. And the goal of this project was to design a vehicle like a standard quadrotor you might see, uh, but we wanted to fly quickly in an environment where we didn't have access to GPS that most of these vehicles tend to use as a navigation solution. So Chris did some great work on that navigation solution, which helped us figure out how to get the vehicle to fly at, at high speeds in things like forest environments. Um, and it turned out to be a very successful project uh, as a result of that work. But as often the case with these projects, at least to as many questions at the end as it was able to answer along the way. And some of those questions led to the excellent work that Chris ended up doing for his PhD thesis. In particular, one of the questions we were concerned about was 
whether or not the vehicle actually knew how well the estimate uh, or the estimate quality was and whether or not it could do anything about improving that quality. Um, so we had developed some heuristics in the project for fast lightweight autonomy, uh, but the idea was to see whether or not we could add some theoretical background to that work. And that's what led to the, the key part of what Chris had developed for his PhD thesis. So his work includes a lot of applications, but it also includes a lot of theoretical. And it's been excellent to see his growth over the past five years in the into these new areas. Uh, it's been work, great working with him along that period of time. Uh, and in the same time, we've had opportunities to have lots of conversations about this project and others, and also had opportunities to spend time uh, doing things outside of uh, the office, including going on a couple of bike rides together. So it's been great working with Chris over the past couple of years, and I look forward to seeing the excellent things he's going to do in the future. Congratulations, Chris. Nick, congratulations on a wonderful PhD. It's been such a pleasure to work with you, an adventure from that first cold email that you sent me in 2012 asking about joining the group to our adventures in FLA and the triumph that was the final year of your thesis. Uh, you've been a wonderful colleague to me, you've been wonderful to work with, your fellow students, you've made everybody better that you've worked with. I can't wait to see what you do next, and I hope that you come back and tell us about it regularly. All the best and congratulations. I want to direct a few remarks to my student and friend, Marcus Kirster. There's sometimes when a doctoral thesis topic creeps up on you over week, days or weeks or months. And there's sometimes when there's an instant of discovery, you just know it when you see it. It reminds me of the famous story of Louis Alvarez and his son. At the end of dinner one evening, they were talking to each other about the extinction of the dinosaurs at the cretaceous tertiary boundary. And one of them proposed to the other the remarkable idea that a meteor might have struck the earth and caused this extinction. Well, of course, time has shown that that's a valid theory. Marcus and I had a similar instant of discovery. He was in my office describing what it was that was going on in his thesis. And I said at one point, this sounds a lot like revenue management, which I've learned about from Peter Bell Obama. Revenue management is the way you structure the charging system so that there's more revenue produced by the spacecraft. And what Marcus showed is that this could be applied not only to airline seats, but to telecommunication that goes through spacecraft. Marcus is a good engineer. I can remember one dawn patrol at 6 a.m. when I brought him out to do the hybrid testing, the testing of a hybrid blimp. He was very helpful and made some very important observations. But Marcus is also a good mountain sportsman. We skied a number of times together and he was always careful to just barely out -ski me. On the other hand, I would sometimes walk into his office when he was watching ski and trekking videos. Marcus is interested in food and drink. He, looked, he asked me to provide a new Nespresso coffee machine for the lab. And Marcus is a Bavarian. For those of you who know Bavaria, you know that in Bavaria, beer is food. So all I can say is that Marcus likes his food. Keep in touch, Marcus, and good luck. Dear Alex, dear family, dear friends, congratulations. I'm very pleased to be able to share my joy and excitement with you on this special occasion today. We all have choices in life, and I am very grateful that after your visiting student appointment, you decided to return to MIT from Germany to pursue your graduate studies with us. You have brought the much needed frankness, wit and humor to the lab and the European spirit and perspective on all important things in life and around the GTL. What coffee to buy for the lab's coffee machine. Thank you also for being GTL's barista. How to enlist everybody to organize social hour on Fridays, the discussions on what food to buy, and most importantly, how to counter Dr. Tan's conspiracy theories about everything except vorticity and internal flows. 
I very much enjoyed the weekly opportunities to discuss, as they say in German, Gott und die Welt. It was a great pleasure and honor to collaborate with you over these many years. Your inquisitiveness and your critical questioning of everything, always prefaced, of course, by your memorable slogan, but my point is, made a real difference. Doing research during a pandemic was unprecedented and challenging, to say the least. Your unwavering engagement, despite being remote on Zoom and six hours ahead in Germany, and therefore spending time late at night, were remarkable. Thank you for persevering, and congratulations on your achievements. Your devotion to supporting your research sponsor in implementing our methodology was unparalleled. And I want to especially thank you for this, also on behalf of Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. Our colleagues in Japan asked me to share their congratulations on your degree today here. Your concern for your fellow students in the lab and around MIT in general is extraordinary and very special. And I also commend you for all your actions and engagement with the MIT leadership as vice president of the Graduate Student Council. Take this day to celebrate these great achievements, and I wish you all the best for the new endeavors in your next stage in life. So, jetzt sage ich noch kurz ein paar Worte auf Deutsch. Es ist wie immer eine besondere Ehre und Freude, die Eltern meiner Studenten zur Graduation kennenlernen zu dürfen, um ihnen meine persönlichen Glückwünsche auszudrücken. Das muss leider dieses Jahr über Zoom gehen. So gratuliere ich Ihnen ganz herzlich zum Doktorat Ihres Sohnes. Thank you. Congratulations, Igor. So uh, Igor came to MIT from ETA in Brazil. I've never had a student from ETA or from Brazil before. And certainly his background was not the traditional background of students who joined my group. Uh, but quickly Igor became one of the best students I ever had. Uh, Igor excelled along multiple dimensions from contributing to the community, to teaching, as well as his research. Perhaps his greatest contribution was in his research. Um, Igor played a leadership role at Leeds as well as in my research group. He was the founding member of the Leeds Mentoring Committee, uh, planning mentoring events for both graduate students as well as postdocs. He was the organizer of the Leeds Student Conference, a two-day uh, conference uh, that includes talks from students as well as outside speakers. Uh, Igor also served as a TA. He was an outstanding TA for 1636 Communication Systems and Networks, where he even introduced uh, a new laboratory component using programmable radios. And for his uh, effort as a TA for 1636, he received the department's uh, teaching award. Igor served as a Europe supervisor. He supervised multiple Europe's, including female and URM students. Um, and he's done an exceptional job at that. And for all of his efforts in teaching and Europe supervision, he also got uh, the School of Engineering uh, Award for teaching and mentoring. Uh, perhaps Igor's uh, greatest contribution was in his research. Uh, Igor worked on the problem of optimizing age of information in wireless networks. Age of information is a new uh, latency metric that measures the freshness of the information and there's been very little work on age of information when Igor first joined uh, the department and he worked on algorithms for optimizing age of information in wireless networks and in fact uh, he received the Infocom 2018 Best Paper Award. Infocom is the premier uh, conference in the networking field and getting the Best Paper Award at that conference is just uh, tremendous. In fact, it's the first time anybody in my group ever got uh, a Best Paper Award at Infocom. Um, so Igor, again, congratulations. I'm sure you're going to do great at whatever it is that you do next. And thank you for everything you've done. Hello, MIT Aero Astro graduating class. Greetings from the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. My name is Mitch Ingham. And I'm Jennifer Maxwell. Mitch and I both work as systems engineers at JPL, and we also lead the university relationship manager team uh, for MIT. And we wanted to just record a quick message to congratulate you all. JPL's motto is dare mighty things, and that's what we wish for all of you. To go forth, 
Dare Mighty Things. Congratulations. Hi, I'm NASA astronaut Jasmine Mugbelli, and I wanted to extend a heartfelt congratulations to all the MIT class of 2021 graduates, but especially to those of you graduating from the Aero Astro program. As a fellow Core 16 alum, I know how much went into getting to this point and how much today means to you, your friends, and your families. I remember well many late nights spent in the Aero Astro Lounge working on problem sets that were due the next day. Sometimes we would even pull a couple of the rolling chairs together for a quick nap before we would continue working. I know I learned a lot about myself at MIT. After receiving only a 24 out of 100 on my first exam, I began feeling a lot of self-doubt. I questioned whether I would even make it to graduation, let alone do well enough to succeed afterwards. I'm sure many of you have experienced similar feelings and questioned your own capabilities during your time at MIT. But here you are today. You finally made it. There have probably been many times when you question your decision to attend MIT, whether for undergrad or graduate school. Why didn't you go somewhere that would have been easier? But I can tell you now, looking back, it is all worth it. No one, including yourself, will question your abilities now that you've made it through such a challenging program. And more so, you did it during COVID. You did it without some of the outlets that I had going through MIT, such as sports or other extracurricular activities. You did it while in isolation. I can't imagine how hard that must have been, but you've all shown how resilient you are. Now, I ask you to take all those lessons you've learned, not just about Aero Astro, but about yourselves as well, and use them to change the world, because we're relying on you. Congratulations, MIT Aero Astro Class of 2021. Michael, uh, as we're here today celebrating your PhD, we can think back to the journey you've been on for the last five years. Uh, that journey began when uh, I met you at the University of Auckland in New Zealand. And uh, soon after that, you were on your way, the first part of your journey, moving to the United States, moving to Boston uh, to become a graduate student at MIT. And of course, that first part of the journey is one of the more difficult ones, uh, being immersed in a new uh, country, a new culture, uh, finding out that your accent, even though you speak English, is a tricky one and that uh, many people struggle to even understand you. But you made the transition. Uh, you uh, were TA for me and unified that first semester. And of course, that in itself uh, is another big part of the journey. Unified is a pretty special and unusual class. Uh, you did a fantastic job as a TA. Uh, not only were you managing the TA, but you had uh, several, two other classes, I think, at the time. And I can particularly remember that uh, Professor Cahoy's class giving you a bit of angst during that first semester. But coming out of that, uh, it was time to start the research journey. And uh, you have uh, made several research accomplishments along the way, but then uh, really settled on the topic of digital twins for your PhD thesis. Digital twins being uh, a topic that's getting a lot of attention and certainly something that's on many people's minds. So now five, five years later, as you look back and as you look back at the last few years of your PhD, uh, I hope you can take a lot of pride in the contributions that you've made. I think your contributions really are going to help in laying the foundations for digital twins and some of the much needed theory and methods that's been missing. But I also think your contributions are gonna have impact in, uh, in industry and in the way that digital twins are deployed in the, in the real world. There are many things that are remarkable about uh, your PhD work. The one that really stands out the most to me is its incredible breadth. One minute, it's the details of probabilistic graphical models and manipulating all those conditional probability distributions. Uh, the next minute, it's computing at scale and dealing with uh, scalable computational algorithms and high fidelity finite element models. And then the next minute, it's dealing with the data and the implementation on hardware of a real world system. Uh, I remember that years ago, we set a stretch goal for you to actually demonstrate and uh, deploy your methods on a piece of hardware on our unmanned aerial vehicle. I'm not sure that either you or I thought that you would actually get there, but now today we can look back and see not only did you get there, uh, you really exceeded my expectations and your thesis is such a wonderful example of both computational and experimental work and more importantly, their integration. 
So you've achieved so much. Uh, I'm sure your American accent, accent now five years later is a little bit stronger than it was on those first days, but congratulations. Uh, I'm really excited that I get a few more months to work with you as you join my group at UT Austin as a postdoc. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what's next. Congratulations, Michael. Dear Andash, dear family and friends, what a special day. My heartfelt congratulations to you for this major achievement. I vividly remember the first time we met in Unified Engineering about a decade ago in September 2010. Um, there were a few things that, that stood out. First, your name. I finally had the chance to pronounce a student's name in my mother tongue, Hungarian. It's probably the first and, and the last time. Second, your limitless thirst for new material, no matter what the technical area or discipline. And third, your determination and perseverance to solving problems, hard problems. I'm so grateful that you approached me for your up research opportunity in our lab later that term, as it truly marked the beginning of our joint journey. Life is a journey, a journey full of inflection points. There's a moment in every engineer's life when the individual becomes or fully transforms into an engineer. Engineering is synonymous to creating things, new things that have not existed before. This transformation to becoming an engineer is stepping up from being able to do homework problems where the instructor or the textbook have the answers to solving new problems where the solutions are yet to be discovered. I can call myself lucky to have had the chance to witness you going through this transformation or this inflection point, be it your 6 to x uh, project or your master's thesis or your PhD research. Not only have you excelled in all of them, you have taken the intellectual leadership early on, coming up with new approaches and solutions to hard engineering problems. No matter how steep the hill or how difficult the challenge, be that computational modeling or dealing with real air engine hardware and experiments, your resourcefulness and curiosity have enabled new pathways and yielded intellectual nuggets with impact. I have known you now for just over a decade and I'm very grateful and privileged to have had the chance to work with you and to learn from you. I'm also very happy I could get to know you and your family on a personal level. Your humble and kind persona is second to none, and you have touched so many people around MIT, the lab, and outside campus with your caring attitude and intrinsic interest in people's lives. I know that one dream that you've had since your childhood was to get a PhD from MIT. Well, this dream is now reality, and I'm most proud of you and very happy to see you graduate. I, many of us, will dearly miss you. As I said earlier, life is about inflection points where things take a major turn. You are a trailblazer and left us all in all. Congratulations to you, to Jeff, and to your entire family. Most mondok valamit a magyar családodnak. Ők is biztos így érzik, borzasztó büszke vagyok, és szívből gratulálok. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Congrats to uh, all the 2021 MIT graduates. I'm Brian Wardle. Um, I had the honor and the pleasure of being Reed Kopp's uh, doctoral advisor uh, during his studies here uh, in the Arash department. Um, Reed recently reminded me he, he came to MIT really wanting to be challenged. And, and of course, we were able to challenge him. Uh, but uh, Reed really um, grew and you know fully met that challenge. His contributions in his PhD, I, I, I won't um, you delineate them all. Um, we're, we're really deep in several areas and, and actually quite broad. And, and one that I know comes to both read and my mind um, is his foray into um, artificial intelligence and in fact, building a, a machine, um, do something that had never been done before. And this was a particularly brave thing for Reed to take on because it's not in my group's expertise. Um, and it was certainly not in scope when he began his PhD. It was a preliminary exploration that, that grew to a, to a major contribution. Um, 
So we've built a team around that work. Um, so it's always a good sign, sort of an extra good sign when you've got, you know, additional folks um, carrying uh, some of the work forward like Reed has done. And Reed's actually led that team for the past um, uh, nine months, maybe a year. Um, so it's well seated um, and on its way. So Reed, congratulations again. We know you'll leave MIT um, and do great things. And we look forward to uh, seeing the different ways in which you'll go out and make the world um, a better place. Um, so again, congratulations. We will miss you. Um, and just for Reed, we are. Congratulations, Dr. Tim McGrath, on successfully completing your doctorate. You have tackled challenging problems with wearable sensors and have developed algorithms to help people measure their motions. Your approach has been applied to evaluate astronaut motion, to support operations development for future space missions, and to inform new telehealth opportunities. You've been such an integral member of our research group, providing leadership, coaching, laughs, and software tools to your lab mates. It has been a pleasure to see you progress through the PhD program. You had many opportunities upon graduation and selected to support NASA and bring your knowledge on quantifying human performance to aid the Artemis missions, which will bring people back to the moon. They are lucky to have you on their team. I wish I could be with you and your family today to celebrate this occasion. I look forward to continuing to work with you in your new role and seeing where your path takes you. Congratulations, Tim. David Mikulescu has completed both his master's and his doctoral studies in our research group. He joined us from Georgia Institute of Technology, where he received his bachelor degree. He came with glowing references from our dear friend and former faculty, Eric Ferran. For those of you who know Eric, he's excited and full of energy for even some of the most mundane things. And when he talks about something that is really exciting, he's extremely animated. So I saw that Eric really couldn't contain himself to describe his enthusiasm for David. And I think that was for me at least the tipping point uh, to go and talk to David and invite him to do some research in our group. David has worked on a number of projects. He's made significant contributions in autonomy-enabled transportation systems, specifically towards the applications of queuing systems in the context of coordination of self-driving vehicles. His doctoral thesis is not about that at all. After filing a master's thesis on that and publishing a number of papers, he decided he would change the direction and work on the applications of scientific computing algorithms in the context of autonomous vehicles or more broadly, control systems and estimation systems. So he specifically worked to apply what's called tensor decomposition methods on some of the most notorious, most computationally extremely challenging multi-agent robotics problems that involves robots on the orders of tens of hundreds. Um, his algorithm solved complex estimation and control problems for such systems and his contributions often delivered orders of magnitude improvement in computational effort when compared to the state-of-the-art baselines. It has been truly impressive, the kinds of things that he was able to accomplish over his doctoral thesis. After his graduation, he insisted he wanted to go back and be near Atlanta, and I'm glad he and his family found their way there. And he's now working on some of the most interesting space problems in the research in industry um, down in Atlanta. So, David, congratulations. It's been a pleasure getting to know you. I'm sure you will go on to have an amazing career, and I look forward to being in touch and, and hope to cross paths again and work together closely for several more years. Hello, my name is Lane Ballard, and I'm Boeing's 787 Vice President and General Manager, as well as Site Leader here in Charleston, South Carolina. A fellow MIT alum, I'm excited and honored this morning to congratulate MIT's Aerospace Engineering Class of 2021. You've chosen well, you've worked hard, and now the world's your oyster. Graduates, you are the world's innovators, and we need you more than ever, driving innovation every day to develop new and exciting technologies that will help us travel more safely, efficiently, and sustainably. These technologies created by you will connect family, friends, world travel, and space. Continue to dream big, ask questions, and be curious. And once again, on behalf of the Boeing Company, Congratulations, Core 16, Class of 2021. My name is Pavia Lal. 
and for the first 100 days of the Biden administration, I was the senior most appointee from the White House and the acting chief of staff at NASA. I am MIT class of 89, 90, and master's in 92. Uh, and since I graduated, it has been a wild ride. Working with colleagues at NASA and the White House, I had a chance to ensure continuity of the Moon to Mars Artemis program across administrations. I had a chance to ensure that NASA was part of the White House Task Force on Climate. The list of exciting things I have done and I'm doing at NASA is long, but I have to say back in the before times when I was graduating from MIT, if someone had told me that I would be helping make decisions of this magnitude, I would have been flabbergasted. I've had an amazing journey since the days of MIT. It's a good thing MIT taught me to be a hard worker because I have never worked harder in my life than the four months between October and January trying to think about what should NASA look like, what should the space enterprise and the Department of Defense look like. Just incredible. I've had an amazing journey. However, it's your journey that I'm more interested in. I'm so excited to see you all graduate. You know well that MIT can crush you, MIT can break you down, but MIT also builds you back up. I was one of the students who struggled at MIT, and it was actually probably a decade before graduation, after graduation, that I visited MIT again, even though I lived down the street in Davis Square in Lexington. Having had the experiences I've had, I am so grateful that I had the education that you just um, had. You are at the start of an amazing journey. If it's anything like mine, it will be wild and bumpy. But I hope you will say yes to things more often than you say no. I hope you will be open to new experiences, agree to move out of your comfort zone, take a ride on the wild side. I wanna say three quick things before I go. The first, MIT taught you and me to work hard. It's a good skill to have. In fact, it will be a superpower for the rest of your life. Thomas Jefferson has said, I'm a great believer in luck, and I find the harder I work, the more I have of it. I completely stand by that quote. A second thing that MIT taught you is to be analytical. This is a skill that will serve you forever. Edward Demings, one of my heroes, uh, an industrial engineer, said, in God we trust. All others must bring data. I'm a full believer in that. I hope you will keep your analytic, analytic skills for the rest of your lives. Last but not least, MIT taught me, and I hope you too, to be humble. I went to school with the smartest people I have ever worked with, and sometimes that was tough. But over time, I have gotten over the fact that I'm not the smartest person in the room. I have made my inexperience an asset in that it made me think in original and conventional terms, which has allowed me to make contributions I didn't think were possible. Accept your lack of knowledge and use it as your asset. Those are my three pieces of advice for today. Congratulations again, so excited for you. If any of you ever want to talk about NASA or space science or space technology, you know how to reach me. Elizabeth, I have told you this story before, but I need to repeat it again. Uh, when you applied for uh, graduate school, you were of course well known to the MIT faculty having been an undergraduate there. And there was a tremendously long list of uh, faculty members who wanted to work with you. Uh, and when you chose me as your advisor, I was told that I won the lottery, which indeed I did. So uh, now that you're finished your PhD and you've, you're graduating, uh, maybe it's good to look back and think about just how that paid off and all the things you uh, accomplished along the way. Um, let's see, you went to Germany, you spent a year in Germany, um, had a great experience there at Aachen and uh, had a, a really good and influential CISC paper out of that. Uh, you TA'd Unified uh, together with Dave Darmafol and uh, did a fantastic job. You survived Unified from the other side of the, the lecture counter. Uh, let's see, you took, you never took the easy path. You took the challenging math classes. Whenever there was an option to take a fundamental class in either math or engineering, you chose the hard route and you survived those. 
you uh, immerse yourselves in the existence and uniqueness of PDE solutions for uh, months on end. You spent uh, months and months working closely with Evans and you survived. Uh, you dealt with terabytes of data from a, shall we say, questionable Air Force code. And uh, again, could have been overwhelmed, but you survived that too. Not only did you survive all these things, but uh, you excelled along the way and you used all of these challenges as a way to really confront things head on and push yourself to higher and higher degrees of, of excellence. And not only have you excelled on the academic front in your classes, uh, in your research, in the mathematical aspects of your work, in the computing and in the applications, uh, but you've also shown great leadership and especially shown a great uh, commitment to building a more inclusive community at MIT and beyond. So I wanna give you uh, my biggest congratulations for uh, not just an incredible PhD, but for everything else that you have accomplished over the last five or six years and uh, just what it's made you as a scholar and as a person. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Congratulations, Rajat. Rajat came to MIT uh, from IASC in India, where he was very highly recommended and he surely did not disappoint. Rajat worked with me and Sertaj Karaman at the intersection of wireless networks and autonomous systems. And I would not be exaggerating if I said that his work constituted perhaps two full dissertations. Rajat was inspired by problems in the area of distributed perception under communications constraints, and he made fundamental contributions to both. He developed fundamental limits on and algorithms for optimizing latency in wireless networks. And I think that work alone was probably enough for a dissertation. But beyond that, he developed a whole new theory of uncertainty variables for state estimation and inference. And that perhaps may be another dissertation. So far, he's already produced five top-notch journal papers from this work, as well as in numerous conference papers, including the ACM Mobihawk 2018 Base Paper Award winner. Um, it's been a great pleasure working with you, Rajat, and good luck with your future endeavors. And now, self touch will say a few words. Okay, so congratulations, Rajat. So it's been a true pleasure for me co-advising Rajat's dissertation with Eitan. Um, Rajat has been very brave, I think, taking on this challenge of bridging networks and communications with autonomous vehicles, robotics, robotic control and perception. In my view, working in this intersection is very important because I think future robots such as self-driving cars will need to communicate with each other to be more efficient, to be more safer. And in order to enable that, they may have to share massive amounts of data with each other. However, we understand very little how best they can utilize future wireless communication systems like 5G networks to achieve this goal. So uh, Rajat has been very brave taking on this challenge and has been very creative filling in this gap. His contributions and his thinking really made me appreciate the challenges and the opportunities at this intersection. And Eitan talked a lot about his contributions itself. In addition to his amazing research, he's extremely nice and extremely personable. I truly looked forward to meeting him and Eitan almost every week for half a decade. It's been a true pleasure knowing and working with Rajat. And I wish you the very best in your career, Rajat, and I look forward to being in touch, hopefully crossing paths to work together again many more times in the future. Congrats again. It is a, a pleasure to offer my sincere, humble congratulations to Jonathan Tilo. I happen to have had the great fortune of working with a wonderful scholar, a perfect gentleman for more than a decade from unified engineering to an SM degree and now a PhD here at MIT. In that process, in those years, those interactions, I've been able to observe the many unique gifts that Jonathan brought to MIT. Certainly intellect, perseverance, a desire to share, a desire to serve. An energy and intensity that allowed him to go beyond what we would traditionally call aerospace engineering. 
NSM degree in blood flow. In fact, modeling, modeling sickle cell anemia. A PhD in which he developed a process to mitigate hemorrhaging using a carrier fluid that's impregnated with iron that allows one to attach magnets over the area of impact to mitigate, to stop the hemorrhaging. He was so broad, yet so focused in his research and his scholarship that I've come to admire him as one of my best students. His future is unlimited. I'm sure he will continue to be a part of MIT. He will return the investments in MIT is made in him, and we will certainly welcome those. So again, in a very humble, sincere way, Jonathan, congratulations. Best wishes for best wishes for continued success, and please, please stay in touch with us. On behalf of Dave Miller, I want to express my heartfelt congratulations to Tonio on his graduation. Tonio has just been an amazing student in both uh, Dave's lab in Arastro and my lab in CSAIL. Tonio is a wonderful gift of a student. He's always positive and he always kind of, um, despite tremendously difficult research problems and challenges, he always stays positive. He always keeps things fun and his technical insights are absolutely brilliant. Um, Tonio joined my lab um, kind of midway through his PhD thesis, uh, and he very quickly became one of our leading contributors. And he has a certain fearlessness, a willing to take on extremely difficult challenges. And I, I, um, I'm just so um, grateful for Tonio's contribution. I wish him the very best in success, and I'm sure I can speak for Dave, that um, we, uh, we feel it's been a wonderful pleasure and a gift to have Tonio in our laboratory. Good luck, Tonio. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is David Simprelevi. I'm on the faculty at MIT, and I lead uh, the MIT Data Science Lab. I want to uh, congratulate all of you uh, for this uh, important accomplishment. But in particular, I would like to congratulate my PhD student, uh, Ray Hao Zhu. Ray Hao, in the last uh, three years, you played an important role in the MIT Data Science Lab. This photo is there to remind you of our time together. I'm proud of all you have accomplished in the last three years, the papers uh, you have written, the awards that you have uh, received, and of course, the academic uh, path that you have chosen. I hope you are inspired by the work at the Data Science Lab to pursue a career that uses your skills in data, in analytics, to make a big impact both on research and education. Most importantly, I hope you will make us at MIT proud of all your achievement. Congratulations again to you, Ray Hao, and to everybody else. Hey, I'm Gwen Shotwell. I'm here at SpaceX in Hawthorne, California, and I wanted to congratulate the class of 2021 at MIT's Aero Astro Department. Congratulations. You survived in this weird world and thrived. Well done. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2021, from the Aero Astro alums on the Perseverance team.
Hey, Aero Astro 2021 grads, you did it. Congratulations. This has been quite a year, but you did it. You succeeded. You completed your MIT degree. I'm so proud of all of you. I'm going to miss those of you who are leaving MIT so much. The department, we're just beyond thrilled for you. So go do great things. We're so excited to see what you're all going to do. And please, please stay in touch. We'll miss you very much. Congratulations. Go Aero Astro. Good afternoon, Course 16 graduates. This is Marie. I have known many of you since your sophomore year and a few others uh, since your first year at MIT or perhaps during your high school years when you visited MIT and Aero Astro. 
so it is indeed bittersweet to see you go, but please do go and continue to make us and your family very proud. Your resilience during the past three terms has humbled us and has inspired us all to stay unified. Wishing you all a great future. Please do not forget Cos 16. Go 16. Congratulations. Good job. Congratulations. 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 Were we together, I would ask you to join me in a round of applause for today's graduating class. Today, your virtual applause will need suffice. While our focus today is our graduating class, I salute everyone who is course 16, undergraduate, graduate, staff, faculty, for all they have done in the last year to keep us not only moving forward, but doing so with excellence. I marvel at the ingenuity, commitment, and uniqueness that is course 16 and the people have chosen to make this their home. Academic year 2021 was a group effort and each and every one of you is vital to this department and its success. As we've learned from studying and working at home, it isn't the buildings that make the department or even the institute, it's the people. But of course, at the heart of the department, the living, breathing soul of course 16 is our student body. And to the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics class of 2021, I say, Congratulations on a job extraordinarily well done. Mm -hmm.